Good morning, folks. Welcome to Ben at 10 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. This morning, I'm going to talk about fishing. It's something that we covered a lot last year, but actually haven't done all that much on this year. Last year, it became quite plain to us as the year wore on that fishing was going to be thrown under a bus in the interest of getting a deal with the European Union. Notwithstanding all the drum banging that the government had done about fishing, the way they'd marched the fishing communities up the hill, the way they'd marshaled the votes of those 186 constituencies, we could sense that actually they weren't going to stand up for them at the crucial moment with the EU. And lo and behold, when the deal came out, they had in fact thrown, thrown the industry under the bus. And the reason I say that is because contrary to what the government claims, that they've entered into a transitionary period with the EU, during which time we will, increasing, we, we will increase our catch. And then at the end of 2026, we'll be able to terminate the arrangements in total. They're wrong. If you actually read the document, what it says is that our catch incrementally increases through to 2026. But then whatever the catches are, as stated at that point in time, they stay on in perpetuity. And they can only really be varied if the government has the courage to terminate the entire trade agreement with the European Union. You won't hear that from the government. You won't hear that from DEFRA. You won't hear that from George Eustace or Victoria Prentice. But that is the reality of the deal. Now, I did comment on that last year after the deal was released. But I really want to now move on. We've been in 2021 for a couple of months. And I want to talk to someone who's crusaded for the fishing industry for many years, much longer than I've been involved in Brexit and the fight for the industry. I want to, I want to bring in June Mummery, who is who's obviously a very close friend, but who was a, a co-MEP with me in the Brexit party uh, for, for, a, for the year that we had in Parliament there. So without further ado, June, welcome to my Bennett 10. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good, and thank you very much for inviting me on, Ben. Yeah, I'm uh, good, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on. So June, it's been a couple of months now since we signed this deal with the EU. And I think both of us were extremely disappointed by it. But what's your take on the deal two months into it? Well, the, take, the deal is still there. The deal is, it, it, it is a disaster. I mean, we can't express, the industry can't express to anyone how bad it is. Um, the mood in the industry is still deflated. I mean, like I say, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to, to, we're trying to get over the, the shock of the deal. But it's not just the deal, Ben, it's the broken promises and the lies that we were told. That takes time to recover from. We were promised um, that we would take back full control of our waters and the resource. And to, and to have that taken away, taken our aspirations and our opportunities taken away from us was a big blow. In fact, that took me longer to get over these, these lies and deceits of our government. I mean, I, you know, I have lots of people say, well, June, you shouldn't have trusted Boris. Yes, I did trust Boris Johnson. He came to my hometown of Lowestoft. I had a meeting with him back in 2016 and he promised us that he would take back control so we're getting over that um and i'm not that type of person i'll sit and cry in my cornflakes you know i've brushed myself down start myself off and off we go again we're back fighting and that is all we can do is continue to to fight the uh, this 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 fight that we've had all these years but have have catches for british fishermen increased at all since we left the european union no, no, we've got no, well, we've got no um, quota. And then what people have to realise as well, even if we had all this quota, the fish is not out there. There is no fish off the East Coast. I had one of my top fishermen go out, 72-year-old Ronnie. He went out last week and came back with two skate for his tea. It's been decimated by the EU, it's been plundered, especially the East Coast. The fish isn't there, the stocks aren't there. So even if you take back lots and lots of quota, we have still got to go out and find that fish. You know, this was a chance, if we'd have left and taken back control, we could have let our waters have a rest. They need to be rested. The fish stocks are not there. The cod, I mean, there is no cod about. I can't, I don't understand, you know, where the fish is. 
Um, we've got CFAS on my doorstep here. They need to go out and start doing some work in the science of all of this. So and with that and with COVID, it's, it's diabolical. I mean, the industry is really, really struggling. Has the government at least done anything to prevent these super trawlers and dredgers and, you know, this sort of mass industrial fishing that the EU has perpetrated on UK waters for ever since the common fishery policies has been been in place. Have they done anything to rein that back in? No, no, they've done nothing to rein that in. In fact, they've issued 80 fishing licences to the EU to come into the 6 to 12. I mean, you know, the DEFRA has granted these licences to the, these vessels while they are unable, unable as an independent coastal state to even know and monitor what these vessels are catching. <laughs> so we, they can come over here and catch what they like and we don't even know what they're catching. My fishermen have to go out, catch a box of fish. They come back in and land it on, on the market. You'll have two um, MMO officers there watching what they've caught. We've got no idea what they're catching. So, no, there has been no help. And obviously, we've had the shellfish disaster, as you've seen. And it boils down to one thing, Ben. We were not prepared. I sometimes even wonder if... If we would, if, we, if, if this was about um, within the deal, you know, did we agree, did, did, did Boris agree to this disastrous deal because we just weren't prepared as a country? Have they, didn't they get anything done in, in five years? Yeah, I, I mean, it thought, certainly looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, we've four years, four and a half years since the vote for Brexit and we didn't have the gumption. And it's not just fishing, it's right across the whole British economic and commercial landscape. It, they, it just seems the government was entirely unprepared for Brexit. They're coming into our waters. They're catching whatever they want. Admittedly, they are at least notionally restricted to quotas, but they're catching what they want. And we're unable to determine what it is that they've caught. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah uh, the UK is reliant on the EU Commission telling the UK accurate data. Wow. OK, so they can come in and take what they want. But what about our fishermen? If we actually fish our waters, are we able to get our fish into the European Union? How's, how's that going? Well, I've always said the majority of fishermen, Ben, would have been happy just to fish our waters. I mean, obviously, the shellfish needs to be exported. But, you know, yet again, five years to prepare for that. They knew we would be lose, leaving the single market. They knew that we were leaving the yeah. customs union. They knew that live uh, mussels couldn't be uh, sent over, uh, over to the EU. Uh, and we're a third country. I've had a lot of people say, oh, well, we're no different to every other country. I said, well, hang on a minute. Did any other country give away its most renewable, sustainable resource? No, we did. So... We gave them all, we've given, given the EU our waters and resource, but what did we actually ever get back? Why, why, why wasn't that, well, in the deal, why didn't our negotiating team say, well, hang on a minute, we need to look at the live fish that we want to send. That's what you do in a deal. Yeah, there should be we some give and need. take, shouldn't there? There's no, yes, there, was yes, no, yeah. there was no give by the EU. No, there was no give. But what so, about this 110 million? Is it 110 or 100? I, I can't remember. I think it was about 100, wasn't it? That the government has promised the coastal communities. Will that not go some way towards ameliorating the adverse consequences of this deal? 100 million. I mean, that's a drop in the ocean, excuse the pun. 100 million is not a great deal of money to share out between the whole of the UK. I mean, that should be more like 500 million. I mean... Um, but there is a hundred million. We'll just have to see who gets it. Where does it go? Who, who, where, you know, what part, what regions will get it? But, you know, Ben, I, I, I feel now that I have to move forward. I have to start looking at the positives, um, which is um, we're looking at joining the RMT, which is a union, uh, the Railway Marine Transport Union. They've always been, they've, they've kept a quite close eye on the fishing industry and we have no voice. We, we, we've been forgotten about. There is no party out there that is fighting for us now. So we've been talking to the RMT um, fishermen and some fishermen have already joined the union. Um, I've just left a DEPRA meeting where my question was asked. I was over the moon 
we need to reinstate the 1988 Merchant Shipping Act. You know, we can take back, unless these foreign vessels are domicile in our country, live here, send the children to school, but above all pay tax, then if they're not going to do that, then they have to leave. And that 54% yeah. of quota will come back to us. So the positives are out there. Well, I think the industry as well has really got behind me and my small team as well. I think they, that, that's really knocked the stuffing out of them. And um, they realise now, unless we all work together and pull together, then fishing will turn into a cottage industry. And we cannot allow that. Yeah. Well, I completely share your concern, obviously. And I mean, I think the biggest problem is that the fishing industry doesn't have a voice. You know, it's not in London. It hasn't got a sort of unified trade body that affects public opinion. Michael Gove and others, in my view, cynically use the whole fishing, um, the whole fishing propaganda, as it were, to get their agenda, to get their vote for Brexit. But then they absolutely let it down when it came to the crunch, even though he repeatedly claimed that his father had gone to the wall as a result of the common fisheries policy. He was prepared to sell the industry down the drain. And what I think, June, you and I and others who are interested in this matter have to do, what we've got to do is champion the industry, go on fighting for it, be optimistic, be on the front foot, take the fight to Westminster. And as you say, I think it's great you're joining this union because that gives you some kind of voice, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a non-political union. Um, it's not a lot of money a month for the fishermen to join. I think it's about seven pounds a month, um, which is a price of fish and chips. Um, and I think that will be good for them. I, I, you, you know, my team, there's about, I mean, Ben, I mean, you've been marvellous and uh, the Brexit party are still there with me, my ex-colleagues from there. But I'm on my own, you know, with this very, very small amount of us that, that are fighting. And I just can't do it on my own. The great British public have been fantastic and support me. You know, when, when there's been times that I really could have thrown the towel in, all of a sudden some little tweet will pop up or I'll get a little note through the through my office, you know, keep battling on. Um, so that's all we can do. You know, I do. I feel as if, you know, we, um, we've baked the cake, we've put it in the oven, but we haven't switched it on. Yeah, great shame. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, June, but we will continue to fight the fight. And come 2024, if he hasn't delivered, I think he's going to lose a few constituencies. That'll be the ultimate test of this Prime Minister. Thank you very much, June, for joining me today. Thank you, Ben.